Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. Let's first take a look at some sample effects. These effects including color change, phase modification, collision cancellation, projectile elimination only appear after parts and entities came into contact. To achieve this kind of triggering effect, we need to use the event editing system, which we are going to introduce to you in this video. The event editing system is a general term for visual programming languages provided by the editor. Next, we will use this system to write the game logic for parts and guide you to achieve the effects just shown. In the event system, a node is the most fundamental entity that constitutes an event. The nodes are split into two categories, trigger nodes and action node. Start with the trigger nodes. The trigger nodes is the root node in event editing. It is the beginning trigger of all events. Select a random part and visit the Edit Events tab in the Properties view. Click on, click to edit, button in Properties and you will enter the event editing interface of this part. Click New button. You should see four options available. These options are the triggers embodied in this part. Options include, when the part is clicked, when an entity touches the part, when an entity is leaving the surface of the part, when an entity launches a missile and the missile hits the part. Let's select, when an entity touches the part first. A node appears in the event editing interface. This is the trigger nodes. The trigger nodes is mainly composed of two parts, execution sequence, and execution port. We can click the add button to add multiple action nodes to the trigger nodes. These action nodes will be executed in order from top to bottom. These sequentially executed action nodes are called the execution sequence and the trigger nodes. The execution port refer to the circles on the trigger nodes that are used to connect the action nodes. That is all for trigger nodes. Next, it's time for the action nodes. To add action nodes, double click on the circles or dots and then drag the mouse. For example, if we want to achieve the effect of size change after a part had a collision. Open the node list, double click and select part, then set the size of the part. Then in the ports of part parameters, double click to select current event parameters, and then the touched part. The above two new nodes we created are action nodes. The action node is mainly composed of the following five sections. Return value port, return value type, parameter, parameter type, and parameter port. Return value type refers to the top label of the action node, which is paired with parameter type. Only when the return value type of the post action node is compatible with the parameter type of the previous action node, the ports between the two nodes can be connected normally. And these two connected ports are return value port and parameter port. There are two ways to assign values to parameter. One way is to directly type in specific values. For instance, we can put the value of XYZ dimensions to change the size of the part. The other way requires connection to another action node for value assignment. Take the part parameter here as an example, we need to connect other nodes to assign value. Note that parameters that allow direct input of values also allow values to be assigned through connection. However, if you chose connection to another node instead, you can no longer fill in specific values then the parameters with red asterisk must be assigned with values otherwise the execution of the action node will fail. Let's run and check how this event goes. Among the four effects previously shown in the scene, we have successfully achieved one. Next we'll use other trigger notice to achieve the rest of the effects. Click a trigger button in the event editor and select when the part is clicked. Repeat the above steps and let's add two trigger notice when an entity is leaving the surface of the part, and when an entity launches a missile and the missile hits the part. If you don't want one of the events, you can click the event first, and then click delete trigger from the upper left to delete the trigger nodes. Note that when you delete the trigger nodes, all logics in this event page will be deleted and cannot be restored. In when part is clicked event, let's add the logic to change the color of the part. Double click to select set the color of the part, under, set the appearance of the part, in part. For part parameter, click, 
current event parameters, then the part that was clicked. Then click on the color. Here we choose black for display. Then in the event page of, when an entity is leaving the surface of the part, let's add the collision logic that changes the part. Double click to select set the collision of the part, under part. Select part in current event parameters, in part parameter. In the open parameter here, we can turn off the collision property of the part by unchecking the checkbox. In, when an entity launches a missile, and the missile hits the part, then, let's add logic to destroy the part. Alright, we've completed the event editing. Time to check the effects. We edited the previous events on the same part. Now we can have different parts to achieve one of these four effects. Select a new part, and create a new trigger nodes, when an entity launches a missile, and the missile hits the part, in its event editor. Here is a trick for editing events. We can copy the event logic, that was set before. Paste it under the corresponding trigger nodes in another parts event editing interface. Attention! In the same event editing interface, and trigger nodes sharing the same name of another node cannot coexist. Now let's run and see if the pasted event takes effect on the new part. In fact, not only parts in our editor have the event editing system. Other components such as entity, item, Skill Missile Area And Game Settings Also have Event Editing System Feel free to give them a try, and we will explain in detail in subsequent courses That's all for this video we hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official forum. See you in the next video.